busy day. Crazy day. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Going to read or try to read with his wind today from John chapter 1, the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not only is this Bible that I hold in my hand from what I'm quoting for him, but this Word is the Lord Jesus Christ incarnate. Everything that God has to say is about His Son, all about His Son, the same one that went to Calvary and died for your sins. So when you mock the Word of God, you are mocking the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are not paying attention to the Word of God, you're not paying attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you have changed the Word of God, you have changed the Lord Jesus Christ. The same was in the beginning with God, Genesis 1, where God created and did not big bang. The God is for Him as the Creator and not evolution. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. Everything that is to be is because of God the Creator. Your ability to walk, to see, to hear my voice, to hear the Word of God being preached, is by the Creator, the Lord God. The vegetables and fruit that you are buying is because of God. The ability that God has given us, the brains to grow, the commerce to buy. And yet, how many of you have thanked God the Creator for you getting up this morning to come to a farmer's market such as this? God has been on the least of your mind to a loud mouth preacher stands on the side of a street and preaches the Bible. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. God made a man named Adam from the dirt, from the dust, and he breathed life into that man. Your life is not by accident. Your life has a purpose. Your life was made by a God to worship and honor and give praise and glory to that God. It's not for yourself. It's never been about yourself until the fall of men. We were made and designed according to Revelation chapter 4 for God's glory, not your glory. Your glory ends up in a grave. Your glory ends up being corrupted in bones and dust and death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus Christ came into this ill-fated, wicked, troublesome, diseased, gross world that we may have eternal life by the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and arose again the third day. Other than the Lord Jesus Christ, your life is in darkness. There is no light. There is no hope. For the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Titus 2.13 
And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. For you will be John the Baptist. God sends prophets out in the world to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. God sends his men out in the world to prepare you for judgment is coming. God has sent his men out to you that you may repent and get out from the judgment of God. God will send people before he judges. He's not cruel. He's righteous and holy. He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to the knowledge of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The same came for a witness to the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And yet today, 2016, God has sent a man named Spiley by the Bible, go ye all of the world and preach the gospel. Tell the people about life. Life is in Jesus Christ, not religion. We dealt with a guy today, he thinks giving money is a Christian act, he thinks giving him food is a Christian act. I'll tell you what the act that is, that's a democratic act. But the Bible Christian act is to tell you about salvation and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not promised a home, you're not promised a meal, you're not promised comfort, but yet all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. I'm here to tell you that about 2,000 years ago, if not more, there was a man that came on this planet sent by God. He was born in a manger. He lived 30 years and came to the public ministry. In three and a half years, he served the God, his Father, without sin. He lived amongst 12 men to prove his identity. And even the one that betrayed him, the one that sold him out, Judas, of Satan declared that Jesus Christ was innocent blood. That man who is God and who is man, the Lord Jesus Christ, beaten, bruised, attacked, spit upon, humiliated, Isaiah chapter 53, because of what you should get in hell. Jesus Christ took our torment. He took our pain. He took our sorrow as He carried that to the cross upon Mount Calvary. And there upon Mount Calvary, He was nailed to that cross. And He died on that cross. And He did not shed church membership. There was no church membership upon the water that cross. There was no water of baptism upon that cross. There was no good people on that cross. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there were two thieves among them. There is none good, no, not one. Upon that cross being nailed to the cross, the very blood of God, Acts 20:28. I said that Jesus Christ is God. I say again, Jesus Christ was not God, He is God, and Acts 20:28 20, says that blood that He shed is God's blood. The Bible says they took him down off that cross, and they buried him in the tomb, according to the scriptures. Then the women of Jerusalem, those that loved him, came seeking a dead body Sunday morning. I say Sunday morning because some of you fools believe that Good Friday and Sunday are three days and three nights and you got to stop doing common more math because 
three days and three nights from Friday is not biblical. I'm sorry. It says when Jesus died upon the cross, the Bible proclaimed it was a high day. It was an extraordinary day that the Jews ceased. And those women came seeking a dead body. Like Allah. Like Muhammad. Like Joseph Smith. Like Bologna. I mean Maloney. Like your religions of the world. Like Ronald Reagan. They're all dead. In the ground. Dead as a doornail. But when they came to the tomb of Jesus Christ, two angels from glory declared the greatest headlines of all the world. He is not here. He is risen according to the scripture. I am no value. Sally Hayward with my name written in the last book of life and claim that the Lord Jesus Christ is God and Savior. Just as much as John the Baptist proclaimed to Israel that Jesus Christ is the coming Messiah. I've got a book here called The Bible that records 400 men seeing the resurrected Christ. More people than that seen the dead Abraham Lincoln in his life. We stand here as a prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Scriptures to proclaim that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There was He was not the light but was sent to bear witness. Tacky, tacky, tacky. I mean, look at your socks. Where is your... Tacky. Where are you, buddy? Tacky. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. We're not that light. We are not the hope. But the Lord Jesus Christ Wait. is the light. Wait, Tacky. And when you stand Wait. before Wait. God, you won't be Wait. saying it's Tacky. Gross. Gross. Good. Thank you. And you proved the Bible so by your actions. He's rejected and despised of men. They would want you at first or Goodman in Manhattan. Yes. I mean, really. Versace, I don't think so. I mean, I That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus Christ is the light of men. Not man being the light of Jesus Christ. You've got to have the true light, and that light is the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. I do not serve a worldly God. This God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is 100% heavenly, 100% holy. He is the God of gods, the Lord of lords, and the King of kings. He came unto his own, and his own received him. Don't give him time, Tracy. Just let him go. He'll go away like a flu. No. He came on to his own, no and his own received him not. No better. Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, is Jewish, born of 
Judah. Born of the tribe of Judah, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Ishmael. Uh, Ishmael, God does not settle the matter with God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest fool right over here. Because the God of the Bible says, whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. And the Bible reads in John chapter 1 that Jesus is Jewish. Your God and Savior has to be God. He has to be Jewish in order to be your Savior. And Paul tells us to watch out because there are other Jesuses out there. There are other Gospels out there. There are other spirits out there. You've got to find out from the Bible if you got the right one, which one to believe. Now, if you have a God of Ishmael, you have the wrong God. If you got the wrong God of Rome, oh, no. a Roman God, you have got the wrong God. If you got a God of America, you have got the wrong God. Because the Bible says, again, chapter 1, verse 11, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Even the Jews, even His own people, rejected Him. As you are rejecting Him today, the Gentiles, and if there are Jews out here right now, He is sent to you for your life, for our life, for our hope, and yet, He's rejected. But, as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. By the Gospel, that Christ died for my sins, and He did. That's not all. And I'll repeat it over and over and over. Because many religions say that Jesus died. That's great. Glory to God. But that's not it. Not only did Jesus die for my sins, they placed Him in a tomb according to the Scriptures. So, my Jesus, according to the Bible, He's Jewish. He died for my sins. He was buried according to the Scriptures. And He arose from the grave as the testimony of two angels and over 400 men and women to He came for Jewish people. According to the Scriptures. If shouting turns you away from God, you are a fool. Because this world is loaded with high volume radios pumping from cars, motorcycles as high as they can be. The Daytona 500 that can be heard miles away. If the volume of my voice offends you, then be offended, but you'll stand before God one day as a loser. You ought to be thankful that I got a voice from God to speak out. Because listen, the people in the Bible were not wimps. They spoke out loud. Jesus spoke to 5,000 people. Paul spoke to an entire city, and yet they were heard. George Whitfield could be clocked five blocks away by Benjamin Franklin. His law will not stand before excuse before God. 
Matter of fact, God may call me up and pat me on the back saying, you're using the voice I gave you. My voice is loud because of traffic, because of all the wind, because of aircraft, because of commerce. My voice is loud that you may hear. Jesus saves. If I were to raise my voice with electric guitar and sing about drugs, sing about beer, sing about all the women I had in my life, you would rock to it and boogie woogie. And yet I proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will proclaim my mouth. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. This is a message that should be heard loud and clear. Jesus saved. My friend down here in the street is preaching to God something. And I can't even hear what he's saying. I can't hear what his words are. If they are the words of hope, whatever the words are, he can't be heard. But friend, you can hear my words with the Bible, with the gospel. Loud and clear, and that's what you don't like. You don't like to hear the gospel. You don't want to hear about God. And the Bible I just read to you, he was rejected. And you reject him again, you don't look for any excuse. John was a prophet, as I am a prophet. Well, I haven't even mentioned hell yet. And the Bible says, but as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even them that believe on His name. April 1987, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Not only have I been washed from my sins, according to the Bible, I'm still a sinner. I still apply the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me from my sins, 1 John 1, 9. Not only is my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but in April 1987, I became not a Christian. And many of you don't even know where the word Christian came from. Before I became a Christian, by Jesus dying, by Jesus being placed in that tomb according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures that he arose again the third day, before I became a Christian, I became a child of God. For the Lord Jesus Christ, because I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and that holy name, Acts 4.12. And John 8.44 tells you who you are the child of, and you are the child of Satan. John 8.44. Now, you can be either a child of God by Jesus Christ, or you can be the child of Satan. John 8.44, just by your birth. That's why John, Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, Ye must be born again, because you are born into the wrong family. In the early Gospel of John chapter 1, John the Baptist says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. No belief in Jesus, you are not a child of God. You are a child of Satan. And if you are a child of Satan, hold your weakness. 
if you are a child of Satan, you will go home with Satan into hell. Having Satan as your father, you go home to his home. But believing on the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the scriptures, and arose again according to the scriptures, I am a child of God, so when I die, I go to God's home. By being born again. Which for me happened in April 1987. And you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are not going to heaven. You will go to hell. Now whether you like the tone or the volume of my voice or the message, it does not matter. That is the message. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. It may be tacky to you, but Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And John the Baptist told me, I become a child of God by believing on His name. So coming to the Father means you got to be a child of God. And that is belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the message of John the Baptist. And ladies and gentlemen, he did not like, they did not like his message either. Like you don't like me. And John the Baptist got his head removed because of the message he preached. All the twelve apostles of the Lamb outside of John had a brutal death by the world because they didn't want to hear the Bible. And John was putting the boiling oil or water, I forget which. The message of the Bible is not fought for it because you don't want the truth. You want a pill, you want a drug, you want a drink that will take care of your problems. There is no pill, there is no drug, there is no drink in hell. As you will be in torment eternally, forever. Life never ends unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ where all tears shall be wiped away, where you'll get a new body, there'll be no suffering, there'll be no pain. You'll be forever with the one that created you that we started off in the beginning of the Gospel of John. Today, I'm offering you the gift of God. For the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you're a sinner. And you are a sinner because you're going to die. but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not only am I offering you a gift of eternal life, I'm offering you a title to be a child of God. The Bible says about Jesus, He's the King of Kings. And you can be a child, a son of the Father, Jehovah God. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's all it is. It's that simple.
in 12 verses of chapter 1 of the Gospel of John, we learn that we are created by God. It's not by accident. Adam was created to worship God. And he disobeyed God. And he was rewarded with toil and death. And misery. As we toil and have misery and have death in this earth. But if you think this earth is hell, you've been deceived. Because Jesus Christ came that we may have life, that we may be saved by His shed blood upon Calvary's cross, that we may not go to hell. But the choice is yours. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or to do it any other way. Again, John says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ will change your destination upon eternal life. He will move you from hell to glory. On his death, burial, and resurrection. He will change of what father you are of. By the new birth. And we're not offering you religion. We're not offering you a way that you can pay. A way that you can do. We are offering you the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior, to be the one to wash away your sins. He is the blessed hope, the glorious hope, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto Him. No man cometh unto the Father but by Him. One of these days, my friend, the Bible says, Prepare to meet thy God. Meet Him by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The Bible also says, I am free of the blood of your souls at this moment. You stand without excuse before God by the message of this Bible. You cannot tell God, I never knew. Because you have heard the undulterated. Word of God. You have heard the gospel. You have heard what God wants you to do. It may be tactful, but it's the truth. It may be loud, but it's the truth. You may not like it, but it's the truth. It's the way, the truth, and the life. Become a child of God by believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And thou shalt live in the eternal presence of God the Father that created you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.